हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम शगुन शर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस इन गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज फॉर गर्ल्स सेक्टर 42 चंडीगढ़ द मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे इज द इंग्लिश स्कूल एंड द थियोरी ऑफ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी फर्स्ट नीड टू नो अबाउट द इंग्लिश स्कूल Stanley Hoffman in nineteen fifty nine declared that only the American political tradition or the American academic discipline in international relations is the only existing theory on international politics. But he was proved wrong by Beer in uh, when he established the British Committee on the Theory of International Politics. it this committee was started in 1959 but it has its more distinctive approach towards uh, international politics so this committee grew gradually and it somehow gave a tough competition to the american discipline or the american supremacy in the field of international relations it is inadequately recognized within the literature that the english school has two main lines of descent though some scholars figure it both first there is the set of early post 1945 institutionalist scholars from the london school of economics including manning martin white bull allen james and f s northage secondly there is b c t i p where wit bull morris and adam watson assembled from other prominent universities in the uk but the essence of the english schools enquiry namely identification of the institutional structure of world politics organized as a society of sovereign states was created in both the locales while manning placed international society at the center of his curriculum of international relations White conceptualized international society as a middle position between realist accounts of systematic logics and revolutionist accounts pleading for or arguing the downfall of the state system as a whole. Butterfield sought to institutionalize the search for this new analysis under the BCTIP chaired by key figures of the school in the classical phase like Butterfield White, Watson and Bull met regularly since 1959. Some scholars like Bull, R J Vincent, Wheeler and Jackson also made crucial contributions in the assessment of how well the institutions of that society are functioning in the achievement of basic social goals and also of what values can or should be pursued in world politics organized as a society of sovereign states. likewise white bull watson buzan and little enriched another field of inquiry of the school namely comparative study of historical state systems with or without a study of the historical evolution of the modern state system while admitting that fixing the story of the english school into neat stages is difficult buzan accepts all weavers four phase scheme setting out the main threads of its evolution phase 1 extends from 1959 to 1966 in this phase bctip fixed international society as the preferred approach to theorizing phase 2 encompasses the period 1966 to 77 witnessing the publication of bull's anarchical society and white's systems of states two can cultural texts which facilitated the exploration of international society in a world historical context added to modern classics by younger scholars like vincents non intervention and international order phase 3 running from 1977 to 1992 was the era of consolidation and passing over the baton to a new generation the bctip phase came to an end after bull's death as did its formal structure of regular meetings its fruits best fruits were 
Bull and Watson's edited volume, The Expansion of International Society and Watson's The Evolution of International Society. Both took White's comparative historical approach to a new comparative world historical perspective on international society, helped by other books of Vincent. Miller and Vincent, Bull, Benedict Kingsbury and Adam Roberts. Michael Donilon, James May Hall, Cornelia Naveri, etc. The Christianing of the e English School by Roy Jones during this period inaugurated a discourse of self-reflections on the state of the school. The final phase four, extending from 1992 to the present, signaled the arrival of a new generation of English school writers, with little or no baptismal link to BCTIP. Non-sectarian, eclectic, ready to draw on or borrow from systems, neorealism, regime theory, constructivism and globalization. The 1992 issue of Special Issue of Millennium and the European Consortium for Political Research workshop at Limerick, Ireland in the same year which culminated in BA, Robertson's 1998 edited volume International Society and the Development of International Relations Theory in 1998 announced that they had arrived to exploit the insights of three generations of scholars to better down sectarian walls and build bridges for higher synthesis. The three R's and S's of English schools. For reasons we do not know like ancient Romans and Indians and later day Germans, English school theorists too love thinking in terms of threes. Dune contends that intellectual ballasts of the English school are predicated on acceptance of three preliminary articles. Adherence to a given tradition of inquiry, a loosely interpretive approach to the study of international relations and an open and manifest concern with the normative dimension of IR theorizing. For others, the foundation of the English school is a tripartite distinction between international system, international society and world society aligned with White's three traditions or rather three R's of IR theory, namely realism, rationalism and revolutionism as summarized below. International system associated with Hobbes Machiavelli runs broadly parallel to neoclassical realism and neorealism, talks about power politics of the states in the background of international anarchy and accepts the ontology of states sought to be captured through positivist epistemology, materialistic and rationalist methodologies and structural theories. International society, mainly focus of the English school and linked with Grotius and rationalism, is concerned with the institutionalization of shared interest and identity amongst states and treats the creation and maintenance of shared norms, rules and institutions as central to the IR theory. Though it has some similarities with regime theory, its thrust is deeper, having constitutive overtones that go far beyond surface instrumentalist implications. Though it also accepts the ontology of states, it is sought to be captured through constructivist epistemology and historical methods. World society associated with Kant and revolutionism thinks of individuals, non-state organizations and ultimately the global population as a whole as the sources of global societal identities and arrangements and places transcendence of the state system at the center of IR theory. Its forms of universalist cosmopolitanism are equally comfortable with liberal and communism. Notwithstanding some parallels with transnationalism, it has deeper roots in normative political theory. While disowning the ontology of states, this conceptualization cannot, because of its transnational element, privilege individuals as the only focus of inquiry. Critical theory does not define or exhaust all the approaches to it, and in Waitian mode, it is more about historically operating alternative images of the international system that it is about capturing non state aspects of the state. The core conceptual basis of the three R's has been shown in the following table. Wait, however, warns that no one of the above conceptualizations alone would be adequate for a full understanding of IR. 
what is required is employment of all of them together and exploration of the dialogue between them for him international politics is a realm of human experience with its distinctive repertoire of problems and language to study it one has to enter this tradition and join in the conversation for the sake of understanding it to study it one has to enter this tradition and join in the conversation for the sake of understanding it as per jackson the conversation is constituted by a variety of theoretical inquiries which conceive of international relations as a world not merely of power and prudence or wealth or capability or domination but also one of recognition association membership equality equity legitimate interests rights reciprocity customs and conventions agreements and disagreements disputes offenses injuries damages reparations and the rest the normative vocabulary of human conduct understanding the society of states goes beyond mechanical application of social science models to know how the people involved in international relations namely states people have historically perceived international relations scholars are asked to explore why these states people are prone to behave in the way they do by developing insights into the ideas and thoughts behind their foreign policies this is different from the obtrusive looking over the shoulder or anticipating the steps a statesman past present or future has taken or will take this is because in place of the intellectual eavesdropping of realism the english school advises as it were a kind of participant observation but what is the relationship between the three s's of english school jackson and sorensen very helpfully point out that the system of states is a realist concept the society of states is a liberal concept the more international relations constitute a society and the less international relations merely compose a system is an indication of the extent to which world politics forms a distinctive human civilization with its own norms and values these words indicate that the movement from the systematic to the societal is ingrained in the epistemology of the english school but the nature of progression even within the societal framework cannot be adequately understood unless we understand what international society means Bull found it emerging when a group of states conscious of certain common interests and common values forms a society in the sense that they conceive of themselves to be found by a common set of rules in their relations with one another and share in the working of common institutions Bull and Watson later defined international society as a group of states which not merely form a system in the sense that the behavior of each is necessary factor in the calculations of the other but also have established by dialogue and consent common rules for the conduct of their relations and recognize their common interest in maintaining these arrangements but the english school does not regard international society as unchanging or state sovereignty as fixed datum of theory as would be evident from the distinction within the literature between a pluralist international society and a solidary international society in pluralistic international society or pis the institutional structure is oriented towards preservation of liberty of states and maintenance of order among them through instrumentally understood pluralist and norms these provide a structure of coexistence based on the mutual recognition of states as independent and legally equal, equal members of society the meaning of the pluralistic order would be clear if remember that the english school regards great powers limited wards and balance of powers as institutions as practices that had evolved over many centuries to maintain order for bull SIS would involve collective enforcement of international rules and the guardianship of human rights and modification of sovereignty in a way that duty is created for members of international society to intervene forcibly to protect these rights but while differentiating this solidarism from cosmopolitanism for the letters fuzziness about the institutional arrangement for delivering these values Bull remains wary about premature global solidarism and its deleterious consequences. 
English school research agenda then and now. Before the end of the Cold War, the English school talked about the meaning of anarchy and order, about order and justice, and about statecraft and responsibility in all the senses of national, international, and human responsibility. Since the end of Cold War, the research agenda of the English school has not obviously changed, but there has been a shift in priorities in some cases, and additions and alterations in others. For example, the movement away from order to justice has initiated a movement in the meaning of justice away from international justice to human justice, making what Vincent calls boundaries between domestic societies and international society fuzzier, and putting the concept of state sovereignty under tension. Besides, international legitimacy is an emerging area since the legal and social discourses on human rights have placed the state under scrutiny from both insiders and outsiders. As a result, non-intervention is no longer an unchallenged institution. Besides, the greening of ISA theory is a distinct cry. In the second edition of Anarchical Society on the basis of five features of contemporary world politics, namely the regional integration, disintegration, expansion of private international violence, the growth of transnational organization and communications based unification of the world. Bull put a question before us. It was whether the classical society of states based on state sovereignty may be yielding place to a secular reincarnation of the system of overlapping or segmented authority that characterized medieval Christendom. Is such a question on the research agenda? An answer to it may be found in the list of themes in the business sessions of an international conference on the English school in 2009. These resource persons spoke about norms and practices including diplomatic apologies, transnational governance of minority rights in Europe, post-revolution Russian diplomats socializing in European international society, apology and forgiveness international society and history of humanitarian intervention. Post-Cold War Transformation of the English School Regeneration George Sorensen rightly thinks that amidst the soul-searching in IR theories after the end of the Cold War, the English School is receiving fresh attention. Dunn shows that while a whole range of recent books and edited volumes in IR echo the concerns of many of the classic English school writers such as White, Bull, Vincent and Watson, the new writers also are at the same time more receptive than the founders to influences from philosophy, social theory and world history and are also less claustrophobic. Dunn's pointer to an increasingly elective affinity to the research agenda of the English school within much of the recent writings in IR without formally aligning with school may baffle one who remembers that just two decades back a leading IR scholar was constructing a case for closure against the English school, though it may even then still at its prime with its bond still sufficiently strong and new recruits joining. But since contrary to John's prognosis, English school has not closed shop, but has rather spread its influence over cross-fertilized and impregnated other schools, one may wonder how it has managed it. This merely means that theorizing about international society has spilled over the brim of international society approach to soak and wet other theoretical domains. The second, though crude and numerical indicator of English school's diasporic spread is its dominant presence in edited texts of IR. Apart from containing five essays of Bull, Linklater's massive five-volume collection of theoretical essays includes at least one English school essay in each of the volumes. Dunn deduces from it that this approach has greater acceptability and clout than when White wrote his classic De Systematibus Civitatum in 1967. Catalytic of the regeneration of the English school and its quite spread into the guarded precincts of other school and approaches has been the effort of other secular scholars. 
while bull's ideas of and insights into international society that had changed a lot from his classic book anarchical society in his later and lesser works have been collected by alderson and harrell in an anthology for the sake of a more holistic reading of bull buzan and little have taken up the questions posed by white and later by watson in his seminal book the evolution of international society to rework them into a truly systematic and comparative study of international systems though bull's less reputed essays add to our understanding of the breadth and depth of international society because of its substantial amount of material on the normative content of the rules and institutions of international society and its exploration of the relationship between european international society and the non european world bull's idea of an international society is not entirely unproblematic the problems are an overstatement of the difference between a system and a society and exaggeration of the importance of west failure for the arrival of the international society and its linking with the birth of nation states making bull a victim to what sorin so aptly describes as the fallacy of misplaced concreteness buzan and little did their repair job here to bring the english school theorizing in step with post cold war theoretical frontiers they used their international system frameworks based on the perspective of world history to identify three significant turning points in the world history of international systems the first happened more than 40000 years back when hunter gatherer bands first embarked on a form of exchange that resulted in long distance movement of goods and ideas from one group to another 100 and sometimes 1000 of miles the second occurred 5500 years back the period marked by the emergence and interaction of state like units where the mutual interactions between sets of these units provided the backbone of the first fully fledged international systems the major units of which became increasingly diversified to embrace agrarian empires nomadic empire chiefdom city states and city leagues the extent which buzan and little have veered away from the methodological parochialism of ir to batter down the wall of westphalia is remarkable in another article buzan tries to relate the concept of international society to structural realism and regime theory to show how they complement and strengthen each other by first drawing a clear boundary between international system and international society to enable a clear boundary to be drawn between them and then resolving the nebulous position in the existing literature on the complementaries of the two terms the middle way under pressure those who cast their lot with the english school in both the classical and post classical phases saw it as occupying alongside constructivism the middle ground in ir avoiding in the classical phase the binary of idealism liberalism and realism and in the post classical phase searching for a nick between assertive mainstream theories of neo realism and neo liberalism and the radical and resistant alternatives to them like critical theory post modernism or post structuralism but this middle position is under pressure from all sides in kenneth wald's book which is the canonical text for neo realist and positivists in ir bull finds no mention at all while white only gets a passing reference in the discussion on alternative definitions of balance of power among the post modernists walker not only objects to whites or bull search for a grotian or humean middle road but also controverts white's contention in an essay that theorizes of ir as marginal to political theory and critiques white's historical method because of locating spatial differentiation or the a historical contrast between political community within and anarchy without in the transformations of the late medieval era jim george another post modernist regarded english school as an example of an un self conscious body of scholarship wedded to the empiricist belief that the task of the historian is to tell the story of what really happened without 
in an any way imposing any part himself on the narrative and then passing judgment like white on the intractability of ir to theorizing in any political theoretic sense chris brown critiques the concept of international society identified as occupying the middle position of a triptych the other two being system and community as problematic whether seen as a happy medium to be defended in its own terms or as second best defensible only because no better international order is on offer if these critiques denied to english school any worth or separate status then by renger also asked english school to close shop starting from the problem of order he adduced that english school has failed in resolving the problem of how to adjudicate between international and world order because it is basically a middle of the road is build bridges it is in the backdrop of such free flowing criticism from all sides that english schools that the methodological and substantive innovations should be evaluated if unself consciousness was the keyword of george's criticism of white and bull and for dune one aspect of the buzan and little work that rests uneasily with the earlier english school research is that they are self conscious about the way in which they are building on the research agenda for historic systems identified by white and watson we can realize the full weight of the methodological eclecticism of buzan and little and other new recruits now let us summarize this module Buzan once said that the English school has remained an underutilized research tool. Now, the English school is not there to to compete with the American school of international relations theory, but time has come for its synthesis. We can use the constructive or methodological approaches of the pluralistic school of English Uh, tradition and we can together bring a whole some comprehensive theory thank you